In the Yakuza, a world where inked skin and stern men reign, the role of women often remains a mystery. People often wonder, do these hardened criminals ever cross paths with the fairer sex? Are there parallels with the Western mafias where women sometimes rise to power? Contrary to what one might expect, the Yakuza's strict codes and traditions paint a different picture. It's a world that typically keeps women at a distance. In this exploration, we're peeling back the layers of Yakuza to reveal the true extent of female involvement. Historical Presence of Women The evolution of women in the Yakuza, Japan's infamous organized crime syndicate, reveals a story of resilience and adaptation. Historically, the Yakuza ranks were dominated by men, upholding a centuries-old code. Yet over time, women began to forge their own paths within this underworld. In the Edo era, female gamblers were common in the gambling dens that formed the Yakuza's roots. This period saw the emergence of women as Ona Oyabuns, or female bosses, a rarity, but a reality in the Yakuza's history. Their presence wasn't just ornamental. These women commanded their own crews and engaged in the same activities as their male counterparts. During and post-World War II, documented cases of female delinquents and Yakuza members surfaced in areas like Yokohama and Tokyo. Yet this presence was not a constant crescendo. The modern Yakuza paints a different picture. The number of official female members has waned, and today, they are almost non-existent in terms of formal recognition within the organization. This decline mirrors the transformations within the Yakuza itself, adapting to the changing times and societal structures. But be sure to stay with us till the end, because we have a jaw-dropping instance that completely defies everything we're about to discuss about women in this video. Decline in Female Membership and Societal Changes A fascinating aspect of this evolution is the comparison with Western Mafia wives. Unlike their Western counterparts, who often remain outside of the criminal activities, Yakuza wives historically played more integral roles. They created a parallel shadow subculture within the Yakuza, adopting its rituals and customs as their own. This sub-subculture was a space for solidarity and identity, where these women found a sense of pride and confidence, mimicking Yakuza customs to forge a unique presence. The decline in the number of female members reflects broader societal changes and perhaps a tightening of the Yakuza's traditional structures. While the exact reasons for this decline are not fully documented, it suggests a shifting landscape in Japan's organized crime, one where the roles and recognition of women have fluctuated dramatically over the years. In Tokyo's Kabukicho district, known for its Yakuza influence, this transformation is particularly evident. Unlike the direct routes of initiation and advancement available to their male counterparts, women's entry into the Yakuza world is typically circumstantial and relational. Many women become connected to the Yakuza not through a deliberate choice of a criminal career, but rather as a consequence of their relationships. When a woman enters a romantic relationship with a Yakuza member, she steps into this organized crime. Active participation and evolving roles. In these instances, love, loyalty, and personal affiliations intertwine with the clandestine operations and a strict code of conduct that govern the Yakuza. As a result, these women often transition from being outsiders to becoming an integral part of the Yakuza fabric. Women within the Yakuza are no longer confined to passive roles. They are now active participants as enforcers, protectors, and guardians. Their work often includes hosting parties, managing financial transactions, or simply providing emotional support to their partners. Despite these limitations, the presence and influence of these women within the Yakuza cannot be understated. These women command respect and obedience, embodying strength and authority, traits traditionally seen as male attributes. Their roles as enforcers indicate a significant evolution in the Yakuza's structure, challenging long-held myths about gender roles in organized crime. Before we unveil one of the most significant aspects of the Yakuza, here's a quick reminder. If you're enjoying this deep dive and crave more captivating content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. Returning to our topic, the most important role these women play is managing the financial and logistical operations of the syndicate. They are far from being mere bystanders. They contribute significantly to the survival and growth of the Yakuza. Their involvement in financial strategies demonstrates a deep understanding of the complex economic underpinnings of criminal enterprises. 
expanding influence in key areas. In the world of decision-making, negotiation, and strategic planning, women's influence within the Yakuza is expanding. They have become architects of dialogue, mediators of conflict, and masterminds behind critical deals. Their ability to navigate complex webs of information has cemented their indispensability in the Yakuza's high-stakes environment. Known as Ane-san, or older sisters, these women wield considerable influence within the Yakuza. They are involved in managing both legitimate and illegitimate businesses, handling financial transactions, facilitating communication between different factions, and mediating disputes. In a world where loyalty and hierarchy reign supreme, these women serve as the cohesive force holding the syndicate together, underscoring their critical role in maintaining the Yakuza's internal dynamics. The legal standing of women within the Yakuza is not uniform. In some areas, laws are stringent and encompass both genders in criminal organizations, while in others, legislation may treat women differently or lack specific provisions for them. This disparity in legal treatment indicates a need for laws that transcend gender-based distinctions, considering the evolving nature of criminal enterprises. The Myth of Ona Oyobun the portrayal of women in the Yakuza in media and popular culture is also a complex narrative that often balances between romantization and reality. Women in the Yakuza are often romanticized in media, depicted as brave figures defying the odds in a ruthless world. Movies, books, and art capture their intrigue, presenting them as enigmatic figures intertwined with danger and defiance. This portrayal, while highlighting the strength of their character, can sometimes oversimplify their real-life challenges. It often overlooks the harsh realities they face, such as navigating a perilous landscape filled with stereotypes, legal hurdles, and societal expectations. In popular culture, there's a fascination with the myth of the Ona Oyabun, or the female godmother in the Yakuza. Media portrayals, such as the character of Orenishi in Kill Bill Volume 1 and the Yakuza Wives series in Japan, contribute to this fascination. However, these portrayals have led to questions about the authenticity of such roles in the real Yakuza world, blurring the lines between fiction and reality. The only rare instance. But there was one exception we found in history when a female became a boss in the Yakuza. Fumiko Taoka, born in 1920 in Hyogo, Japan, emerged as one of the few female leaders of the notorious Yamaguchi Gumi, the largest Yakuza gang. Her journey from a hard-working family to the helm of the criminal underworld began with her marriage to Kazuo Taoka, despite her father's disapproval. Fumiko played a pivotal role during Kazuo's incarcerations, managing gang affairs and earning respect within the organization. After Kazuo's death in 1981, she took the unprecedented step of leading the Yamaguchi Gumi, displaying strict and effective leadership. During her three-year reign, she oversaw extensive legal and illegal businesses, expanding the gang's influence and membership. Fumiko's tenure ended with the selection of Masahisa Takenaka as her successor, a decision that sparked the violent Yamaichi War. Her death at 66 left a lasting impact on the Yakuza world, her funeral attended by members worldwide, symbolizing her stature as a respected figure in the criminal underworld. So that's a wrap up to our dive into women's roles in the Yakuza. While the rest of the world sees women stepping up and challenging norms, the Yakuza sticks to its old ways. It's a unique world where tradition holds strong, even as everything else changes. If you found this peek into the Yakuza as fascinating as we did, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up.